hear the bells. Are you gonna, she's, yeah, she'll, hold on, she'll get there. And peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, whoever you are um, and wherever you find yourself, either on the spiritual journey or in place, know that you are welcome here just as you are to share the gifts of God so freely given. We, um, this week, start a new series and it's entitled Drawn In. All creation began with the dream of God, the will and intention for life to exist in what was a void. All of our actions are born out of desire, out of a dream and vision for our own future. To imagine and to create is our birthright. What energizes you? What makes you feel truly alive? What moves your soul, your inner being in the deepest way? What you create out of the answer to those questions is your gift to the world and the way in which you are part of God's unfolding and ongoing creative dream. I invite you to listen to um, Bonnie singing. Oop. And this is where we punt. I am going to um, see if I can share my screen and just share this music. Oh, I'm going to continue and Meg, then I'm going to ask you to take it back in a moment.
Here we go. Creating God, you called forth all that exists in a moment of divine brilliance. Open us again to that spark which you ignited in each of us at our creation, so that we may generate more life-giving energy in this world. Draw us into your story of hope. Give us the courage to dream. Amen. And please join us for our next hymn. We we'll sing together, God of the Sparrow. Oh, Meg. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. Somehow I changed the, um, this morning I changed the uh, videos and it didn't show up, but we can do it this way.
invite you all of you children um, <clears throat> to enjoy this story with me. Um, the title is The Dot. Art class was over, but Vashti sat glued to her chair. Her paper was empty. Vashti's teacher leaned over the blank paper. Ah, a polar bear in a snowstorm, she said. Very funny, said Vashti. I just can't draw. Her teacher smiled. Just make a mark and see where it takes you. Vashti grabbed a marker and gave the paper a good strong jab. There! The teacher picked up the paper and studied it carefully. Hmm. She pushed the paper toward Vashti and quietly said, now sign it. Vashti thought for a moment, well, maybe I can't draw, but I can sign my name. The next day when Vashti walked into art class, she was surprised to see what was hanging above her teacher's desk. It was the little dot she had drawn, her dot, all framed in swirly gold. Um, I can make a better dot than that. She opened her never before used set of watercolors and set to work. So my young friends, um, I've just read you a story and Miss Joy, I think has delivered art supplies to your homes and I, I'm not sure why I can't see everybody right now. Let's see if I can get a, <laughs> let me see. There we go. I see, there's the Castillos. I bet the Telfords are here too. So did Miss Joy deliver you some art supplies? Yes? Yes. Great, great. What I want you to do is um, create the first thing that she gave you, maybe it's a dot. And before the end of worship this morning, I would love if you would be willing to share what you created with the rest of us. What do you think about that? Is that okay? Does that sound good, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah? You're going to share? Oh, they're, yeah. They're, the Telfords are already, they, they've got all their stuff. Great. Okay. Excellent. So we will see you at the end of the service, but let's first, let's say, <clears throat> let's say this prayer. We make our belief that God is playing and creating through people in all places, and God plays and creates with us, too. Let all God's children say, thanks be to God. Thanks, thanks be, be to, God. to God. Our reading today comes from Genesis chapters 2, 4b to 9, and 15 to 17. In the, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground, but a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden 
in the east. And there he put the man whom he had formed out of the ground, Lord, the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for the food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may, you may eat freely of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So you're missing a slide, Meg. I am going to start here by sharing my screen again. I want to show you all, before I start talking, I want to show you three pictures. So let me just do this and then Meg can claim the screen back once I'm done. Okay. So here is the first picture. Y'all see that? three smiling small chefs and a judge. And here is the second picture. Miss Eileen hard at work. I don't know if you can tell in that picture, but that's supposed to be a cake. And here are, um, let's see, where's the final? Here we go. Here's the final product and then I'll tell you the story. Hmm. All right, see that? All right. And while Meg gets us back going, I'll let you know what those pictures are of. This um, summer, while we were on vacation, my family decided to add a contest to our beach activities. The three older grandchildren all participated. These amateur bakers were given images of cakes and very few instructions and then were set loose to try and duplicate the confections. Our contest was inspired by the TV show Nailed It, which presents amateurs bakers with impossible tasks. The bakers are asked to create an intricate cake um, with insufficient time. So make this huge um, and fancy cake uh, in 45 minutes is a typical. The results are actually hilarious. Um, when they lift off the cake cover and show the cake and say, nailed it, um, what's shown is nothing like what they were t told to make. And the point of the show is just to have fun. It was amazing to me to watch our three young bakers with some <laughs> cakes they thought might appeal to the judges. Um, Meg was a judge and then my son and his wife who are pastry chefs were the other judges. The results were remarkable. You saw their finished products. It was a 
ten year old, an eight year old, and a seven year old. The cakes were not only edible, they were remarkably accurate, dis delicious. And even though the kids all started with the same yellow cake mix, they got really creative and the cakes were very different. The winning cake was a banana cake with peanut butter frosting. What struck me about the contest was the energy, enthusiasm, and amazing creativity of the kids. They were a task. I was nervous about being an assistant to Eileen. But they all embraced the challenge and they came up with amazing, innovative ideas. We all possess that same inner spark, creative ability instilled in us by our creator. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. God formed the human, Adam, from the dust, Adama, then animated the creature with God's own ruach, Hebrew for breath, wind, spirit. God placed this human in a garden with the intent that the human would till and keep the garden. This is how our sacred story begins. Humankind was created to cultivate and care for the earthly garden we inhabit. Last winter, a number of us read um, David Wallace Wells' challenging book entitled The Uninhabitable Earth, Life After Warming. This nonfiction work points out the myriad ways we have failed in our God-given task of caring for creation. We weren't able to gather as a group and talk through what we'd read. And um, I was left feeling like I needed to process some of what I'd heard and think about what that actually means for us. The climate crisis I acknowledge is real. I get it. I also believe that we were created with the capacity to write the ending to our current story. Over the next six weeks, I wanna share some of the challenges that Wallace Wells presented in his book, and then I wanna set them alongside creative solutions um, that have been gathered together in a book entitled Drawdown. This book highlights the creative human responses to challenges. Human beings have not carefully tended the well-being of this planet. Many scientists agree to that fact. Wallace Wells states this in stark terms. Some of the things he says are, according to the World Wildlife Fund in the last 40 years, more than half of the world's vertebrae animals have died. In just the last 25, one study of German nature preserves found that the flying insect population decreased by three quarters. The delicate dance of flowers and their pollinators has been disrupted as have the migration patterns of cod, which have fled up the Eastern seaboard toward the, Atlant toward the Arctic, causing problems for fishermen. These are just a few examples of the damage human disuse and neglect has wrought. Food crops are also at risk. Globally, grain accounts for about 40% of the human diet. The human population is growing in size Global progress has resulted in helping that process of human thriving and growth, but it has also increased carbon emissions. And increasing carbon emissions have led to rising temperatures. Higher temperatures result in less than optimal crop yields. Increasing numbers of people, decreasing ability to grow food crop. Additionally, the increased levels of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere have been shown to decrease the nutrient content of the crops we grow. Tilling without tending is putting humankind in a tenuous position. Most estimates put the number of undernourished at 800 million people globally. Africa strains to feed its growing population. But Africa is not the only continent having trouble. We have hungry children right here in this country. This 
earthly garden we depend upon is suffering. And humankind is suffering along with it. But there is good news. One chapter of Drawdown points out that simply shifting our eating habits could lead to better health and potentially be one of the most impactful solutions to our climate change challenge. In 2016, a groundbreaking study from the University of Oxford modeled the climate health and economic benefits of a worldwide transition from animal protein to plant-based diets. This shift alone could reduce emissions by as much as 70%, 70%. If meat were a delicacy rather than a staple, if people simply ate less meat protein, the long-term impact on our environment would be significant. Now, I don't want to imply that shifting the way we eat is easy, nor do I want to say that none of us should eat meat ever again. Food is more than just calories consumed. It has economic, cultural, and ritual significance, and the ritual significance comes up a little bit later in this service. And yet, eating lower on the food chain, eating a more plant-based diet, is a low-tech way to face and deal with a significant challenge. When faced with a challenge, human beings have the creative capacity to dream to seek solutions. The results, they're not gonna be perfect, but we need to begin to use our God-given ability to dream of a different future. We have a choice. Let's be part of the dreaming, part of the creative process. Let's find ways in our own lives, not only to use the land that we live on for our own purposes, but to tend to creation so that the land can bless generations to come. Amen. set aside this time um, for people to share. And I know I was on vacation. Um, so maybe uh, once I'm fully back and y'all are reaching out to me, maybe after I offer you this week's um, suggestion, um, you will think of ways that uh, you are creatively seeking um, the benefit of this planet and the peace of um, others. So uh, on our last evening at the beach, my daughter-in-law, who I told you was a pastry chef, um, came to me and every year we empty the contents of our refrigerator at the beach into the trash. Um, and this year she had looked in the refrigerator and seen what we had and she said, how about I make breakfast tacos tomorrow? And she used leftover chicken, leftover salsa, leftover things that were left over tortillas that they had brought from New York. That's an offering of creativity and 
Saving food waste is a significant way of helping our environment. So um, for this morning, that's an offering of creativity and peace. Um, hopefully all of you will think of ways that you are um, helping to save our planet, something creative that you're doing in your yard or in the world um, or in your kitchen uh, or on a drawing pad. So may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I invite you to um, share now um, what is it that you're celebrating or what are you praying for? Well, we've got the wedding at the house next Saturday. That's a celebration. Yeah. That's all, people here, all masks and wedding. Apart. All Make masks, you said everybody's gonna be wearing a mask? As far as I know, I think they're gonna have it all wrapped up tight so nobody can do any of that. I won't really know all those details, but it should be quite the wedding, I would think. It's gonna be a different situation. So all, Mike, um, Mike is hosting a wedding. We're celebrating. Congratulations, Mike. Well, I guess. <laughs> Talk to you next Sunday. You're just, you're just the host, right? Yeah, yeah, that's all. I'm going to be quietly in the background while they're changing their lives. <laughs> <laughs> nice way to put it. Is this John getting married? So where else are we, friends? Celebrations, concerns, you're all awful quiet. Are you, is it been hot? It's been hot, right? Yeah, it'll be okay. It'll, it'll wash off. Well, real quick, um, I guess last week's service wasn't um, recorded, and I celebrated Meg. Um, my um, star had been the same word as it was last year, and um, she ratted me out. And every time I see my star, it makes me smile. Um, I don't look at the word, I see the sparkle, and I think of um, Meg telling me that, that she loved me. So I celebrate you, Meg. Do oh. love you. I always love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll let you, um, you can be a quiet bunch. Um, let's pray together. I'll lead you in prayer. Creating God. We were made in your image, gifted and graced. May we be all that you created us to be, using our skills to tend and nurture your world. God, be present with all the sun, body, mind, or spirit, including Robin, Marion, Robert, Wayne, and Mary. Howard, Anna, Phyllis, Amos, Suzanne, Melissa, and Judd. Paul, Stephen, Casey, Jess, and Jerry. Oh God, hear us now as we pray using the words Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, 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 be thy name. Give thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, and the glory of men. Amen. I'm going to give Meg a chance to meet you, and I'm going to invite you to gather where you have them, your communion element. I'll have a little something to drink, a little something to eat.
Jesus knew just how important shared meals are. He sat down to eat with strangers and friends, with rich and poor men and women, and no doubt children. The virtual table we're gathering around today isn't your table, and it's not mine. It's God's table, and you belong here. All are welcome. Come and be fed. I'm going to invite you to lift up your bread and your cup at the appropriate moments. Let's pray. Creator God, we gather in your name, invited by Jesus, bound together with your spirit, in union with each other. Feed our bodies and our spirits with your comforting presence so that we might be your comfort to others. Bless this food. Show me what you have, friends. What What are you eating today? Frittata. Frittata, nice, nice. Bless this food and open our hearts. Bless this drink. What have we got for drinks today? Coffee? Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I have, I have uh, cranberry juice in honor of um, being up north. Bless this drink, O oh God, and pour out your love on us. Amen. At a table long ago, Jesus offered bread and cup, blessing, breaking, pouring, sharing. This morning, we remember that table, that invitation. And we remember together that Jesus is the bread of life that binds us together. Take, eat, and remember. I don't know if we have a singer this morning, Bonnie. Are you up for singing? Uh, I, I don't have the music in front of me, so. Mm. All right. It's, I can probably do it. What the hell? Oh, bad, bad thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees as we fall to our knees with our face to the rising sun. Oh God, have mercy on me. Lovely. Thank you. Jesus is the spring of life everlasting. Take, drink. And remember, and let us pray together. Oh, amazing God, you come into our ordinary lives and set a holy table among us, filling our plates with the bread of life and our cups with salvation. Send us out, O oh God, with tender heartedness to touch an ordinary everyday world with the promise of your holiness. And let's see if our Well, oh, nope, didn't make that either. I am going to share my screen again so that you can hear this final hymn. Just get there. Thanks for your patience. Let's see where are we? Here we are. Whoop. Bear with me, the cakes, the baker.
And now friends, may you see the unfolding of each day as an opportunity to be a co-creator with God. As a Jesus follower, may you feel his company leading you toward creating more kindness, justice, and mercy. May you know the nudge of the creative spirit within through all you are and do. Amen. I invite you all to stay for the virtual coffee hour just to check in. Um, as you'll notice, we had the Giflify on the screen. Don't forget to send in. Um, Mary Ellen updated me and said, y'all need to send your pledges in. So uh, don't forget to do that. I know it's a little harder now. That we have to them. I see Greg and Liz. Hey. Greg, unmute us. Hello. Hello. Hi there. <laughs> Um, the kids are trying to show you their pictures. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, my goodness. That's gorgeous. So neat. Tell us about it. Is that a whale? Yeah. Oh, I love it. I, and, there you go. There you go. And that's Williams? Pretty flower. And, and a butterfly, several butterflies. <laughs> goodness. 